Greetings, Stars fans, and welcome to the first ever series clinching game six of the Two Brothers Miked Up show. If you didn't know, what we do is we go back and we look at the recent Dallas Stars game, give our thoughts, and discuss it to you right here on YouTube. Uh, spoiler alert, Stars win 5-4. to four. They take the first round series against the Minnesota Wild, or Mild, if we want to call them. Before we start off each discussion, we go back to the last one, give out uh, our scores of what we thought each team was going to get if they were going to come on top. Quinn, you like a score of 2-1 to one for Dallas? In a five to two score for Minnesota, I like to score of four to two for Dallas, and a score of four to three for the Minnesota Wild. Almost got mine, but then they decided to score two more goals after that one, and Dallas got another one. So the, I think what the biggest headline going into this game was not Kari going back in net. I think we all anticipated that. But it was that Nachushkin was out and Moen was in. Uh, how did you feel about that decision? I know that we've always said that Nachushkin needed to be out, but did you feel as if Moen came into the lineup and sparked what Nachushkin hasn't been doing? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I think this was the best call they've made all series. Like, it was obvious from game two on that Nutrushkin just wasn't bringing his game. He just couldn't get open. He couldn't do anything on the boards. He's getting pushed around too much. And then they scratch him. They bring Moen in. And it's like the fourth line is almost performing better than the second line in the, in the playoffs now. Because, I mean, Moen... I think I read something about Moen. It said it the best, you know. Nichushkin, he's still young, so, I mean, he's still growing. But Moen, he's got his Stanley Cup ring. He he knows he's not going to be I a first-line player. I think that's what a lot of people are forgetting is that he does have that Stanley Cup. Thank you for interrupting me. But I feel like... I lost my train of thought, so I'll remember that, and you can start up with another idea. Well, no, I was just going along with your idea is that I think a lot of people forget that he was on that Anaheim Ducks team that got the cup. You know, a lot of people, whenever they think of Moen, they just think of it was some spare guy that came over to Dallas. I know we haven't really talked a lot about him on this show, but... You know, we've said that Moen brings in that grit to the lineup that this team really needs. You know, in, in a in a in a series clinching game in a game six when you're in the other team's barn, to have Nachushkin out and Moen in really sends a message. And to me, that message is: I don't know if we see Nachushkin for the rest of the playoffs. Uh, he'll be back in. Now, do you? I, I definitely feel like he'll be back in for Game One next series, just because the management's going to want to see if sitting him that one game lights the fire under his ass that needs to be lit since halfway through the season. And if he doesn't, then I can see him getting scratched out again and Mullen just taking over the spot. Or if Richie's healthy, you know, maybe bringing Richie up or somebody. That's that's gonna bring grit to the to the lineup instead of it's, offensive ability. Yeah, like you're saying, like the next the next round, like everybody knew that Dallas was the better team. Like the the range between Minnesota and Dallas was pretty big. Going to the next round, it's kind of a crapshoot who's going to be the better team. Like the the skill uh, divide between the teams is now smaller going into the next round and the next round is big hitters you know not saying that Minnesota isn't a big hitting team because they made the playoffs and we saw that the hell of a fight that they put up and we saw the physicality that Minnesota brings but 
Minnesota was really just trying to assert their dominance through the physicality aspect. They couldn't really match the skill. Now, if you go up against another team, especially if you go up against St. Louis, they're going to have skill and they're going to have size. That's the thing about it, is that there's not much difference when it comes between these teams, and you're going to need more grit in this lineup. I think the scratch sends a pretty clear message. If it doesn't say that he's out for the rest of the playoffs, it says you had damn sure better pull your head out of your ass. Because if you don't, if we don't see anything from you in game one of round two, you know, this this isn't the regular season. A lot of the stuff that you were doing in the regular season, you got away with because it is the regular season. It's to gear you up for the playoffs. Um, I thought it was a fantastic move by Ruff to finally see that Nichushka needed to be out. We finally needed to see... Um, I honestly thought Moen looked really good. He had that chance there in the second period uh, that Dubnik put aside. I thought he really helped balance out that fourth line to where they weren't getting a lot of balance because, I mean, I think Nachushkin only got nine minutes last game. So this game, it, it was able to put out the fourth line more to rest some of your top hitters. Uh, let's see. Uh, Moen finishes with about nine minutes but those you could tell those nine minutes that's the thing about it was you couldn't tell Nachushkin was out and that's there. what Moen's Moen's only supposed to be playing nine minutes a game you know he's not supposed to be playing at a top tier level like Nachushkin is Nachushkin should be pulling 18 to 20 minutes a game up there with Ben and Sagan and all them because he is toted as this high prospect. Yeah, between 15 18 minutes, yeah, uh, yeah. That he needs to be performing at. And the funny thing is, is that everybody's still going on about how he, this is only his third season or his second season of full, like, active hockey because of his injury. His injury was a year ago. Like,. I understand a rough start at the beginning of this season because, you know, I mean, I'll go so far as I don't even understand the, the rough patch at the beginning of the season because he had all off season and he had the whole rest of that half of that season he came back in, you know, to get acclimated, to re rehab his body, to get back into game action. And yet he's still putting out this piss poor effort. Now, I mean, you may disagree. If you disagree, comment below. Tell me why you think that you should, should be getting a hell of a lot more praise than what we're giving him. But, I mean, for a 21-year-old coming back off of injury, you think you'd want to prove something. To prove that, okay, I got hurt, but now I'm back, and I'm ready to make, make some noise. But all we heard was just thuds. No, I absolutely agree 100% with... The uh, assessments that you're giving out, I I can understand him being in game one because it's at home. He got scratched. Doesn't wake him up. But oh, man, if he gets relegated down to the fourth line, he'll probably start on the fourth line because everyone else is kind of meshing well together. But if he doesn't play his ass off and start to move up the depth chart and get at least... If he doesn't pull at least 12 noticeable minutes, he's out. And I don't think he gets back into the playoffs. I think Moen comes in and brings... Moen plays more intensity in five minutes that Nachushkin has shown in like his past six games. Well, that's because Moen's... That's what Moen's playing for. Uh, he He's playing for those five minutes. Like He knows he's not going to be in every night. He knows he's that that off-put winger that you scratch and you bring in when you need that that extra fourth liner. But, I mean, the Chushkin just, jeez. Like, this kid needs to get a clue and get his act together and start. I don't, you know what? I don't even care if you start producing, you know. I just want you to play sound hockey. I don't want you to be getting tapped against the boards and you go flying because you can't manage your own weight. 
Uh, you need to start playing how your body is formed. You're a big dude. You're strong on your skates. Start using it. You know, play defense. Play offense. The goals and the points will come. But you got to play hockey first. Yeah, it's... You could have all the skill in the world, but what's between the ears is what counts. And right now, Nachushkin just doesn't have it. Uh, moving on. So the the Stars jump out to a 3 nothing first period by goals from Klingberg on the 5-on-3 power play. Jason Spezza gets his uh, fourth, and then Patrick Sharp gets his third of the series. The game started off, Vern Fiddler takes a penalty. I thought Vern Fiddler kind of had a rough game today. Um, he, he, he was making a lot of decisions that I didn't really agree with. and But the Stars kind of just, you know, they stuck with it. They got that early kill, and they really started getting to the grind. It That first period really reminded me a lot of game one. And the way they went about their business in game in the second period as well really reminded me of game one, just of how they were composed, how they looked like they were just just another day at work, you know. Uh, it looked like the pressure just wasn't getting to them. They, they got slapped in game five, and they dunked their head in some cold water, pulled their head up, and just readjusted. And... Getting up on that three nothing period, uh, Klingberg switching over to the offside uh, with Spezza, getting that pass. It was a great goal. Um, Spezza going hard to the net, picking up the rebound from Eves, shooting it in. Great goal. Sharps uh, two on one, well pseudo two on one, two two on two. Goal was really great. I. After that, uh, after that second period when Ben scored, I had fully expected uh, Dubnik to just come out and be like, "Okay, look, you, you're getting kind of lit up, and uh, we don't need to sacrifice you anymore." Because it just looked like the stars were just going to keep the foot down, and they were just going. I I expected. From the first two periods, it looked like the game was going to be like seven to nothing, maybe seven to one, if the if they were going to get some type of fluky, fluky goal. Um, but the first period ends on a real big high note, a, a note that we hadn't seen in a while. Uh, for them to just absolutely shut down the Wild in a period, the the Minnesota crowd started booing them. Um, they didn't give up like a late minute. Uh, a goal, and going into the second intermission, you just felt good about it. Uh, halfway through the game, before Jamie Benn uh, gets that goal, how are you really feeling about the game and just how it looked like the Stars rebounded from Game 5? Well, first thought, where was this in Game 3? Like, I mean, and that's the curse of the Dallas Stars, like... I mean, you play so fantastically in two games. Then you go to Minnesota with all the momentum in your favor. You go up two to nothing. And then you just start thinking that, well, the game's over. We can take it easy. We're up two nothing. We can turtle. And then Minnesota just comes out and lights your ass up. Like, it was so frustrating to see them play so well in game six that why couldn't they have done this in game five or game three you know I get it, players have off nights but this was like a whole different kind of intensity other from like aside from game one like you don't you didn't see this from them and it's like why do they wait till they were pushed up against the wall to start playing like this when they know that they can play like this from the start yeah no I, I completely agree it's it's that whole complacency thing that just settles into their game. But it just looked as if they were kind of going to get through that, especially when Jamie gets that goal. It looked as if they were just just going to go for the throat. 
But then we transition into the third period. That has to be the most... I mean, we talked about uh, game five. We were on edge. I was off the cliff, and I was plummeting down. I was wily coyoteing over the cliff down. Minnesota gets that first goal. Okay, fine. Let them have their goal. Let them have their Prince goal song. Let them have something. Fine. Completely fine. But 16 seconds later, uh, they come back and they get a goal again. And then Lindy Ruff calls that timeout and you're like, what's happening? You know, in just a flash, if, if you don't believe that momentum exists in sports, this game right here proves that momentum uh, is in sports. You get one thing to go your way. It's a snowball down a hill. Uh, after Minnesota scored those those two goals, what, what what were you feeling then? And then whenever they started getting more goals, how did you see the Stars reacting, especially their defense? There was no reacting. That was part of the problem. I mean, it, it, it seemed like inevitable game three was happening again. You know, these, the stars, they get the pressure put on. I think a perfect example is you see Hinsky or maybe Roussel with the puck on the boards. Maybe somebody's within two strides of him and he just ices it. Like, he doesn't try to, like, soft ice it. He, he ices it. For what reason? You were just out there for, like, almost a minute and now you have to stay out there with a fresh group of Minnesota Wild people coming after you with with the fury. Like, <laughs> Minnesota knew what they were doing at that point. They knew that they were going to get the win. They had they nothing had, left to yeah, lose. Like, they didn't care what they were going to do to you. They just they knew that they were going to score goals. And Stars, I mean, if you listen to these things, you've got to calm down in these pressure situations just calm down make it easy pass don't try to ice it all the time I'd like to think that there's a Dallas Star 1 or 2 that we're popping in on YouTube on there on an iPhone maybe but I mean like until you learn to calm down in these pressure situations they're going to get the best of you and just like this game proved they're going to score relentlessly on you no, absolutely. Um, touching on that icing thing, boy, did that really creep back into their game just like it did in, uh, what was it, game five or was that yeah, four? Game five. game five, where it was just icing after icing after icing. And then uh, Roussel takes a, a dumb penalty early in the, uh, in the third period trying to get around the guy I honestly think it could have not been called I mean it well, kind of just same time at the same time I understand why it was called but at this that but at the other time I you know, like Minnesota was down for nothing so I understand why it was called but it could have not been called let's let's be honest with that uh, but then the Stephen Johns uh, high sticking minor think a little reckless um he needs to be in control of his stick a little bit I mean, better well, than in that. my opinion it kind of looked at the minnesota player just skated into his stick because his stick was up he didn't move it any it just yeah. happened to be that the player skated into it yeah you know, i know sell it it's uh but then again johns has to be in control of his stick and it needs to be on the ice it, it does more harm up in the air than it does on the ice uh, when Spurgeon scored that third goal, and I'm talking like it was like 20 seconds into the power play, I was like, oh, no. Like that, you want to talk about being just a Minnesota Wild fan, walked into our house, kicked me right in the junk and said, no, not today. You know, they're blasting their prints. They're having a good time. Everything's purple. 
and we get a guy that scores a, another fluky goal from the from the pot from the point ultimately an own goal with Dubnik uh, pretty much pushing it in himself but I was seeing that there was someone on the Dallas Stars subreddit that had posted that to all the people that thinks that Goligoski should have been scratched he just scored the series clinching goal doesn't make up for the fact that he was problematic for about like six goals throughout the whole series six yeah. important goals that three alone in the series that were kind of game defining goals that he yeah. gave up if you go back to game five if he doesn't give away that puck in the first they don't they don't tie it you know they're still down a goal with three minutes left if Koivu gets well, that I goal think, well yeah but also at the beginning of the game too they no, no, don't no, ever the, go up one nothing no that's that's the one I was talking about like okay. if the one that he turns over in front of the net that he's trying to go around yeah game five if he doesn't turn that over, the score is just 5-4. but Or it's 4-3, but it goes against... No, he turned it over at the beginning of the game. Yes. Of game 5. It I was 0-0. Zero, zero. I know, but if he doesn't turn it over, it doesn't get a goal. And so Dallas gets their 4. Minnesota only gets their 3. So it's only 4-3, so they don't... They don't get the win. They don't tie it at the end with Koivu. See what I'm saying? I do now that you explained it properly. <laughs> no, I, I explained it quite well. But a lot of goals. He was on the ice for, didn't do anything about it. And that goal does not make up for anything. I'm sorry. Yes, it's great that he gets that goal and he gets the slight redemption for it. But in my eyes... And in my heart, my hockey heart, there's no redeeming that. There's no redeeming his like twenty faults when he has he has twenty negatives to two positives. He has two goals. Whoop de do. I'm sorry, that 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 just doesn't make up for it. Yeah, in my opinion, he should still be scrapped for the rest of the playoffs. No. Yeah. Like this series alone just proves that he is not able to handle pressure of being a top defenseman. I could not agree with you more. I think he is he is a serviceable bottom three defenseman. That's that's how I think of him. You don't I mean and I was making the comparison with Daly the other day. People uh, say, Oh, look at Trevor Daly. He's he's made up for all those uh, for that bad early start and that bad uh, stars last couple seasons that he was on no it's only because he's a bottom he, he's not he's not a top defenseman anymore he doesn't have the responsibilities of being a top defenseman he's not asked to be the guy on the back you know Goligoski is still that guy whether we want to admit it or not he's still what Dallas depends on their top defenseman Klingberg is number two in the depth chart, it goes Goligoski, Klingberg, and then you work your way down. How um, I know uh, Klingberg is the future of what Dallas's defense is going to be, but right now Goligoski is still that guy that gets the most minutes, and that's how you define who your top defenseman is. But you move him down the depth chart and only give him like 18 minutes, perfect, perfect. You know what? I... <laughs> I would would not mind if Goligoski was just a third pair defenseman on our team. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But since he's he's our top defenseman, you see so many more inadequacies about his playing that he just needs to leave. We have too many people in the pipeline coming up, and I cannot wait for him to be gone. Granted, I will put up with him for two more months as long as we win a Stanley Cup. That's 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 my sacrifice to this team. But uh, whenever I read that, I just 
you just have to say it doesn't make up for the inadequacies that he has to his game. Uh, he gets that goal. Dallas gets a little bit of breathing room. It's now five to three. I think everyone exhales and it's like, oh, okay, okay. We weathered that storm and the wild are just going to get deflated now. That's what you think kind of as a sports fan. You know, you get a big goal after that surge that they had. But uh, five minutes later, Pominville gets a goal and everyone is back on the edge of their seat. Uh, there had only been one team in the history of the NHL to come down uh, from a 4 uh deficit to win. And it kind of looked like Minnesota Wild was going to be the second. It, it, it honestly did. Towards the end, I, I didn't know whether to close my eyes, scream, or throw up because there were so many emotions going on. Dallas Stars actively tried to lose this game. Yeah, they did. They, they didn't did. try to win the game. No. They actively tried to lose they, the game. They held on. They they saw that tsunami that was coming towards them and they just froze like a deer in headlights and they just prayed that somebody was going to have a reflex. Especially when uh, I can't remember. It was uh, back when it was like 4-3 to three when Kari Lettinen comes out of the net and tries to clear the puck, but hits it to, like, Brodeen. But he's, like, so, like, holy crap, the puck's on my stick. And he kind of just kind of hesitates and whiffs on it a little bit. They were trying to give this game away. Especially the controversial no oh goal when you plain as day see Demir's take his synergy... Easton stick that he holds so dear to his heart, I guess, that he actively tries to put it past Kari so they can go to overtime. Yeah. I'm shaking with frustration just saying that. Like, it's... Like, every, <laughs> like what are you doing, Dallas? Like everyone is, like, trying to review it if he had put his hand over the puck in the crease, which I didn't see. But then we got the angle. That showed it hit Kari's uh, bottom of his pad where it kind of curls up to his toe. It, it hits like right there in between that crease, and everyone's like, Whoa, did that cross the line? It's called No Goal on the Ice, and there's a ton of uh, time that's looked at it. It's, it, it actually wasn't the longest goal looked at or reviewed. The Roussel uh, kick goal was reviewed like three times as long as this one. But all the replays show wasn't all the way over the line. It just was not. There was nothing conclusive that says it was all the way over the line. And a similar goal happened to the Calgary Flames. Uh, I think it was Sam Bennett that had a similar goal. And then I tried to look at that and it's, and they had something that kind of explained it because you never get just a straight top down look because you can't because the crossbar hangs over the, the red line. So it's always, you always have to have an angle. It's always an angle looking down at the puck and it might seem like it's over the net, but that, there's a theory, or I don't know if it's a theory or anything like that, but it's called parallax scrolling. That it looks like it's over the line, but if you were able to push that angle back to where you get a straight top-down look, it's not over the line. And controversy. just It's, it's another fluky thing that just happens to go in the way of the stars. And I think... That has to be some promise to me going into the rest of the playoffs. Do you think... I think the Stars can just continue to ride this luck wave. You need luck in the playoffs just as much as you need skill. You know? Do you think the Stars' luck runs out? Yes. Mm. 
I guarantee it runs out. With the fact that Game 5 and Game 6, they basically lost the game by themselves. There, I, I seriously doubt that they're they are going to have to rely heavily on skill and a little bit of luck. You know, I mean, it, I mean, the last last night's or yesterday's game just you saw it all. Passes to the other team right when they're about to score, huge rebound, shooting it on our own net. Just yeah, it's great that. The luck was in our favor on that day, but Dallas. it's not. They, I feel that they've used up their luck for the entire playoffs in this one series. Dallas did have ten giveaways to Minnesota's three, but that is because in the first forty minutes, uh, they controlled the play, they controlled the puck, and they were out hit uh, uh, twenty-six to eleven. But again, that's because they controlled the play most of the game. But stories of this series has to be uh, Jamie Benn. He had points in every single game. He's on a six-point uh, game streak. He has now ten points, uh, four goals. Spezza, four goals. You know, calm, collected dude that we expected him to, to pretty much be. Sharp gets three goals. Uh, defense question mark just like you know the defense was actually playing good as of late in the regular season but now we're seeing kind of towards the end of the first quarter of the season towards getting to the slump type defense is what we're starting to look at and the goalie switch those were the big headlines of this series but the stars find a way to get through it overall what did you rate this series and what you saw for Dallas? D. <laughs> a D. Yeah. Even G, even just a win, a winning series. I mean, in my opinion, Dallas lost this series. Mm. They I may mean, have they could, may have won. You could look at it, but like the that. fact that they just actively tried to lose the series and these games that they played, like that. <laughs> I don't know what you say about that. Like, constantly just defensive breakdowns mm -hmm. from your top defensemen. You know, you're just... I mean, you're getting the goals. You keep switching up the goalies, I feel, is a bad idea to do. Granted, yes, it paid off in the end, but it should have just let Carter ride it out. Mm. I mean, there were so many inconsistencies with this team that it's just... I, I, I really can't give it a passing grade. Mm. Uh, me, I gave it a a C plus, bordering on a B minus. If there was an in between of that, that's where I would put it. I think uh, our offense proved that it, it's going to stay the course. Kari looked good. Uh, Niemi looked serviceable. You know, this is pretty much what we thought. Uh, our goaltending was going to be uh, defense is what you're going to have to hang your hat on for this series and what's going to be the most questionable going in. I think that's the only question that we really have is going into the next round is how is our defense going to look. And the thing about it is is that yes we have Sharp, Oduya, Spezza but we also have guys that have never won a playoff series before. You know, maybe it's a good thing, and this is a big maybe. You could disagree, or whoever's listening, maybe it's a good thing that the Stars saw this adversity, especially in Game 6. This could be a teaching lesson. You know, they could, they could uh, look at this and learn from it. They could. Am I saying that they are going to? They we, we, better. we don't know until round 3. That's that's what I'm hanging my hat on is hopefully that it's a teaching lesson for the adversity that they went through in Game 5 and Game 6. I think going through that works for you more than against you. Uh, we can't really do scores. 
for what we think the next game is going to be because we don't know who we're going to play. But what I'm going to ask you is, who do you want and who do you think it's going to be? I mean, at this point, I would rather have the Blues because a surging Blackhawks team that manages to just win after win after win from being down and then they come back and win this series in huge fashion you know that's Blackhawks playoff hockey right there and I think that's what scares me more who I'd rather have is the Blues because if they come out and win they're going to be tired They're going to be battered because the Blackhawks are just going to do absolutely whatever they want and whatever they can to win this game. And I think with us being rested a couple more days will give us an advantage in the first couple games. Hmm. So, but then again, we've had the Blackhawks number the entire season. And that's what what I'm going to go off of on my... Uh, opinion is that I want the Blackhawks. They've played the most games out of any team in the past three years. Uh, their players, they they have got to finally break down. Something is going to give with the Blackhawks. And that's who I want. I want the Stars to go through the best to be the best. I want to see how the Stars match up to the Blackhawks in the playoffs. They had their number in the regular regular season beside that one game, that 5-1 loss. But other than that, the games weren't really close that the Stars were winning. I want to see how the Stars play against them in the playoffs because Blackhawks playoffs is different than regular season Blackhawks. Uh, who Who do I expect to play? I think we're going to be playing the Blues. But it's because the Blackhawks are just tired and they're just beaten down. And I think uh, the Blues style is built more for just wearing you down unless you know the Blackhawks get a big surge of offense. I think that's the only way Blackhawks get out of this next game. Uh, who do I want? Blackhawks. Who do I think they're going to play? the blues so with that that is the discussion be sure to subscribe hit the like button leave any kind of feedback down below remember this is a show for fans by fans and as always tune in next time